Good morning gardeners. In today's video, I'm going to give you a July garden tour of my front and my backyard. So the two things that I really wanted to focus in my garden this year was companion planting and getting everything out at the right time. So certain vegetables like my brassicas, they need the cool weather to mature properly. So the broccoli heads need the cold weather to actually grow really big. And if you get them out early enough, you can cut off the main head and get some side shoots, depending on your variety. And then over the winter, I read a lot about companion planting and I wanted to give it a solid effort this year. So in each of my garden beds, I've got one veggie, one herb, and one flower. And the theory of companion planting is two plants are companions. Normally one will benefit from the other one. And this can be your tomato plants will grow. And if you plant basil right beside it, a common tomato pest is a tomato hornworm. So the basil will actually mask the scent of the tomato hornworm and kind of camouflage the tomato plant. The pest will never find the tomato plant. And that's one example. There's probably a thousand of them. And then at the same time with your tomato plants, your basil goes really well with it in pasta sauce. So I kept that in mind too. I want everything to kind of, if I go to my garden for one certain vegetable, like my carrots, I want something that's companion that I can pick at the same time so I don't have to move as far as well. It's just more efficient. Before we get started, I'll say that we've had a abnormally cold spring, almost freezing. It's 14 degrees in Celsius, abnormally cold even for us in Canada. So with that, some of the things I planted, such as my warm season crops, like my tomatoes, are almost stunted. They're starting to pick up now. It's just not good for the hot weather crops. Let's begin the garden tour. So this garden bed here, I've got the infamous skull picked up a few years ago. It's supposed to keep the birds away. This tree up here is hiding them. This here is my full sun front yard garden bed. So what I did this year that was different was I got all my broccoli plants out much earlier than last year and got them out. They were able to actually grow a pretty good size head. They are now starting to bolt. But then I've got some side shoots going on here, which I never got last year. And that's because of the timing of this guy. And over here, this side of the garden bed gets all these pine needles that fall down and makes the soil acidic. So what I've done is my squash seemed to do well last year. So I put those down again this year. Then on this side, which they're not doing so well because of the cold weather, was the cucumber plants. And I started these guys indoors. Cucumber, I just direct sowed, which is probably why the seeds didn't germinate as quickly. And in between everything, like right over here, these are my marigolds. And then over here, I've got some elysiums. In between all the plants, I've got things that smell and things that attract bees. So the idea is that onions will actually deter a lot of the pests that can attack the broccoli plant, which it's worked. Marigolds over here will attract any of the pollinating bees that will help uh, pollinate some of my plants. Over here, I've got some cosmos, some elysiums. And then another thing that I'm trying to do this year is in between all my plants, I'm trying to use the space a lot more effective than before. So I planted the beets before the squash plant took off. So they were able to get a head start. And then in between, so the cucumber plants, which they should be taken off by now, but they have not. I did some beets. That's just to use the space and planted these beets beforehand, hoping they'd grow. And then the cucumbers would catch up after. And then I harvest this and not, it wouldn't interfere with the cucumber plant. But for some reason, the cucumbers not growing yet because it's too cold. And you can see that there is some um, cauliflower going there trying artichoke for the first time. I got another cauliflower that's growing really well in this pot. And then these guys are Carolina Reapers. They definitely are not taking off. Far too cold for them. Got some dill, which I'm gonna be using a ton this year. So I've planted them in pretty much each garden bed and the dill will be for canning this year. And over here, I've tried to reason and have a truce with the birds that are in this tree. They are nice, but they're, we're eating all my veggies and all my leaves, my leafy greens for water. And I read that if you add water around your garden, then they'll drink that instead of eat the leaves. And so far, kind of worked. And over here, I don't know what happened with this guy. This is a broccoli plant that started bolting real early. Might have been the container size, might have been not enough water in the soil, but this guy started bolting. So what I'm gonna do is let it grow. And then these guys, all these flowers will turn into seed pods and I will be able to harvest them and have seeds for next year. Now I'll turn around here. So this is my early salad bed. So this garden bed was the very first one that I planted and it's all my cool season crops. And then I've got some kale here. And this is winter boar variety, which I really liked last year. Tastes amazing, really good in smoothies. 
highly recommend it. Then in between the kale and the kohlrabi, I've got some lettuce. It's a couple different varieties. And then I've got the same theme, where I've got onions, a flower, and some herbs. So in each garden bed, I like to have a veggie, a flower, and a herb, all in the same garden bed and within reason to each other. Trying that out this year, don't know if it's gonna work. So this is my U-shaped garden. And then over here, I've got my pak choy. I planted them in the same spot last year. They did really well. No pests, no problem. And I just harvested some, so I've got some stew that I'm gonna be making. I find they, they taste the best in the stew. I've got these little windmill looking things, and these were supposed to keep the birds away. I think they did a pretty good trick. They spin in the wind. They're very shiny. They scare the birds. And then on this garden bed, I have a very common theme. It's the spinach. The reason I have so much spinach planted this year was last year the spinach plant bolted. I collected all the seeds. I had like 500 to 1,000 seeds. So I just kind of planted them earlier this year and just kind of let it grow. And now they are starting to bolt, but I got a ton of spinach out of it. And then in between, I've got some Swiss chard, some more pak choy, some kale, some winter boar kale, and some flowers and some onions. And then over here, I just harvested it. It was my radish bed. And I'm letting these plants here go to bolts. And I wanna see if I can harvest the seeds and plant it next year. And that's the French breakfast variety. This is what I just harvested, more or less thinned. They're all bushy. These guys are all kind of touching each other. Thinned everything, took the radishes out. This is the pak choy, got a ton of it. Using it some stews, got some kale, some lettuce. And then these are all my radishes. Some of them are pretty good size. So this is probably one thing that I'm gonna be changing for next year. This is the front raised garden bed. We've got a tree over here. It's a bit shaded for certain parts of the day. And because of the cold weather we've got, it's not getting enough sun. The tomato plants are somewhat stunted. This guy back here is looking like crap, probably not gonna make it. So instead of the tomato plants, I'm probably gonna put some leafy greens. And because it's shaded, if we get some cold weather, they're gonna love it. And it'll not bolt as fast in the summer. So this was my first companion planting experiment this year. And what I have is a bunch of stuff. I have my tomato plants here and I've buried it extremely deep all the way to the bottom. And then I made kind of like a volcanic hole here. And then in between, uh, I've planted a bunch of radishes. So when I water the tomato plants, it'll go into the hole and also water the radishes. So I'm trying to use the space a lot more than I did last year. So just radishes, tomato plants. And then what I've also got is nasturtiums everywhere. This guy will help attract the bees to pollinate the tomato plants, do the work for me. It also attract the aphids. We have an aphid problem. Aphids love the nasturtiums more than the tomato plants. And then I have some beans here, hopefully to replenish the soil. I've actually never had good luck with beans for some reason. The birds have eaten them some of the time. Hopefully this year I can enjoy some beans. And as you can tell, some of these tomato plants are extremely small for being in July. That's just because of the weather. We've almost had freezing even three days ago. It was almost freezing. So hopefully the weather picks up and these guys grow. They're probably double the size this time last year. I've got some Greek basil here. These guys are hardier than other types of basils. Then just a couple different assortments of flowers. This was in my last video, which is how to build a rain barrel. I'll link it in the description. So this is the newest addition to my garden. This is 255 gallon rain barrels. So I've got 440 gallons of rainwater that I can collect. These guys are full because we've had some rainwater and it can water your garden for two to three weeks without any rain. It's a good thing to have for any gardener. Then over here, which I'm going to improve later in the year, is just some two by fours. This used to be a hedge all the way down. I've dug it in, added some compost, amended the soil, just put these temporary wooden blocks and got some tomato plants, marigold, uh, lysiums, and then underneath I've got some radishes growing. These guys aren't doing as well, probably because it's shaded. And the reason I didn't go all the way down, stopped at this tree here, is because of this pine tree, makes the soil acidic. And I'm planning to build this out with not just wood, but bricks, all the way to here later in the year. So this is my side hedge garden bed. So this is part of the backyard garden. So this here is my potato bed. I planted my potatoes here in my first year of gardening. I have some in ground and then behind is some in grow bags. Kind of doing an experiment this year where I want to see which ones grow better, raised or lowered. Last year I hilled it 
nothing really became of it. I didn't get more potatoes. So this year I'm doing an experiment and just kind of letting them grow, letting all the greens pop through the soil. And then I want to see if the greens will send energy into potatoes. I'll get more of them, bigger ones, that kind of thing. Then over here is a row of my Swiss chard. And these guys have pretty badly been decimated by the leaf miner. Never had a problem with them before, but because of the cold weather, I'm assuming it didn't help. I'm always having to go under the leaves and pick the larva eggs. Started these guys in my greenhouse for the first time this year. And then keep going with the companion theme. I have some cilantro here, some nasturtium, some marigolds, some more marigolds, and I've just got them laid out throughout this whole garden bed. In the back here, which needs to be picked, harvested, I have some more kale, some more kale plants. This will get full sun, but partially shade in the afternoons. Then I've got one Brussels sprout plant, only because I haven't had any success with the Brussels sprouts. I've tried growing them before, didn't have success, so this year I'm giving it another go, but it's for the experience. And then in between everything, as you can see all the straw on the ground, I'm trying to use the space as much as I can, just like in the front garden. So I've got some beets, some radishes, all in between, and in between some of these celery plants and lettuce plants as well. So I'm trying to use my space better than last year, every year trying to grow. Then over here, I've got some garlic plants. These guys are pretty much ready. I have to cut off the scape and then it'll send all the energy into the garlic. So these guys will be ready pretty shortly here. Back here, you can see that the potatoes are starting to flower, close to being ready. They have flowered, so it'll be shortly here that I can harvest everything. We did just get a hailstorm. Looks like we might get another one today, but this has always been the herb garden. Added some Cosmos this year just to keep the pest away because these guys had been attacked last year. Seem to be doing much better. Got some parsley, some cilantro here, bunch of rosemary plants, some more parsley, and then some dill. Gonna be growing a lot of dill this year because I'm trying canning this year. Then around back here, I've got the rhubarb that keeps on growing. So last year I planted a bunch of peas and beans and I didn't get any harvest out of it. One, because the birds were eating everything that I planted. So I decided to plant my peas back here. There's a bunch of bird feeders in the backyard, so hopefully they stay full from that. But so far the peas are looking good. Not really any signs of the birds eating them, or at least all of them. So hopefully it works out. And I put some marigolds here. This guy just tipped over. It's another rain barrel. If you guys ever build a rain barrel, don't use this variety. Most of the water goes to the bottom anyways. And I'm planning to use these bricks to elevate this guy. Have a few layers going down. So this is last but not least, the side garden bed. Come on, come on. Don't mind the fence, it needs replacing. And this is the very last section of the garden. So when I said that I got a lot of spinach that's bolting, oh baby, do I ever. I do need to harvest some of this, but these guys will be bolting and getting seeds. This is where I actually got my seeds from last year, was all of these spinach plants. And this was kind of an experiment. It worked out, probably not as well as it could have, but what I did was I actually threw the seeds down just generously, and then I put leaves over top. So when the spring came, some of these plants, as you can see, actually grew on top. And I'm not sure if that's the reason these bolted so soon. Next year, I'll definitely be taking the leaves off a lot sooner than this year. This is the last rain barrel, another 110. This was my second design for the rain barrel. And this is where the 90 degree elbow was introduced. Everything's sitting on top, so the 90 degree can be a bit higher. Flow into the next one. You could do this as many times as you want. I have ordered some caps for these guys so the mosquitoes don't go inside like last year. A watering can could go inside a lot easier. And they do get a lot dirtier just because there's no filter like the first one I built. And I have water barrels on every single corner of my house so I don't have to walk as far. These guys water this garden and the peas in the back and it works out pretty damn well. I don't have to walk nearly as far. Thank you guys for watching this video until the end. If you want to know 15 raised garden bed mistakes that most beginners make, check out this video next to find out. Love you. Bye.